In this part two of the What Makes Curia So Special 2020, let's talk about a little bit about the architecture of Curia. So you can have Curia in what is called an all-in-one, uh, and it's your only one appliance. It can be physically or virtually, more on that later. Or you can have, as your needs growth, you can actually have different boxes. So for example, you may separate the process of collecting events and put an event collector there and you can actually have an event processor that basically as the name implies process those events or you can have flow processors and this can be geographically or for performance reasons so he grows uh, horizontally so scalability have never been a problem with Curator we have the largest circles in the world and, and all that is performance is never an issue uh, you have the Q&I box that I spoke about before that allows you to see inside the payload. We have a module that is called Data Node. And what that baby does is not only increase your capacity for storage online information for, for, for searches, but also improve the speed of the search by having dedicated processors and memory to perform those searches. So the searches are not done necessarily by the event processor, the flow processor. Uh, some of that task is actually offloaded to the data node. And we even have a box called a, a DLC, which allows you to have any Unix box. If you don't want to have an event collector because it's a small office, you can have any Unix box physically or virtually again to perform the, the, the task of an event collector. The way you manage all this infrastructure, there's a wonderful free app and more on the app exchange where you get all those free apps called QDI. It's a beautiful app that tells you everything about the boxes so you know how they are performing, whether you need to increase capacity here or there, move things around and tune up the, the, your process. Now, one point that is very, very important to mention is that the very same software that runs on-prem is the same that uh, and you know you can run it on appliances on a, on a and you can install the the OS uh, in it uh, you can run it on virtual machines on ESX environment you can run it on AWS and Azure and Google Cloud and there is one special offering called QRock that does a little bit more than, it's more than just, okay, running on a cloud, but who's managing the appliance? Who's making sure that if I need more capacity is actually given to me, you will need to manage those. Well, QRock takes care of all your virtual appliances for you and is an IBM uh, type of cloud. Right. So you can have, and, and, and you don't have to have everything on the cloud or on-prem, you can have combinations of both, and many people do that. Uh, you may decide to put an event processor on the cloud to avoid uh, egression charges. So the, the flexibility is absolute and you can define and, and put the architecture to work in the best way that, uh, that fits you. And of course, particularly for on-prem, uh, you can have it in high availability or disaster recovery mode. Now, I want to switch gears and tell you something that I really like uh, about Curator, and it's the capability of detecting Windows attacks. So you see, you need to assume that your Windows machines, the, the protection that you have on EDR, on IPS, on antivirus, etc., that they will be bypassed, and in fact, you know that they are. And you want to have the capability of detecting when that happened. Well, Microsoft has a technology, and Curator supports this, supports this very well, called Sysmon. I like to call it the depth charges. When you, when the, when uh, the, the the allies use depth charges to get those pesky submarines come out of the super of the surface, so so you can destroy them because they were hidden. Well, this, in the same way, the attacks that takes place today are extremely obfuscated. Uh, I can talk for hours on this, but I prefer you to actually take a look at a series of videos, uh, particularly if you want to watch just one. Uh, t take a look at the at the latest use case. Uh, actually, I haven't even uh, updated the this one. I, I attack Windows 7 and Win 10 machines fully patched, and you'll see the type of attacks that people do and how they obfuscate their attacks and how malicious they are. And I 
put this as a, in a format that is a lab so anyone can actually download these things and get the, your skills uh, to think like a hacker in order to defend Windows system with the beautiful thing that there are a ton of curator rules tuned specifically for detecting when those when your defenses have been breached and people get to the core of those uh, Windows systems it's called Sysmon another thing that sets curator apart from other SIEM technologies is the app exchange and that is something that was made possible by virtue of having the entire product being available via API and those API calls allows you to have an ecosystem of application let me actually select I'm here on the app exchange and all, all the apps in here except for this uh, advisor one uh, are free and they are and of course some of them require you to have the, the product notice that in here they are very many pr uh, uh, companies and I can go by for pages and you'll see logos of there's some IBM stuff but there's plenty of things from other vendors because everybody wants to be in this ecosystem and, pro and, and produce a better integration with Curator and this integration comes in the form of rules, custom even properties uh, so you don't have to uh, mess around with that uh, report even dashboard that allows you to navigate from curator into uh, one of these particular products uh, integration like the one with resilient that allows you to uh, send events to resilient for the workflow processing of it uh, i mean the, the i you know it will be several videos before i can even talk about every one of these uh, integration but you all you need to do is download a zip file in here and you go into your administration administrative tab and you add it by simply going in here and say where did I put that and you go to the file where you put it click add and bingo you have that integration working comes in the way of rules and reports and whatever it is that you're bringing it's a great uh, addition to the curator ecosystem and one example and, and I have in that PDF there are uh, examples of how you can do wonderful workflow extension because Curator is not a tool for workflow with the resilient bidirectional integration and I have an example of how you properly deal with phishing that I'm pretty sure that you will enjoy uh, watching it well Curator has many rules but some of those rules are not meant to fire offenses necessarily they are meant to add risk to user everything we do in life generate some risk so, so not always you need to have an offense in fact you can or cannot and the UBA is designed so when people do too much of a risky scene and the accumulated risk that they have surpasses a particular threshold you might be invited to see what the guy is actually doing we can see this guy you know removable media detected by Turek well what the heck is this so you can actually go into UBA and and perform an, an analysis of what is it that the guy was actually doing and I can go here and look for B Arnold which was the user ID that we saw and that, that's Ben Arnold and because I have uh, integration with Active Directory on any LDAP I get all the information and why is it that the, these guys becoming risky well it's doing something strange here let's actually see what he's actually doing oh he's looking for job searches that's a physical security guy in Washington and I can see the details that he's looking for jobs in Russia well that's not very good and I can analyze all these all the things that he's actually doing uh, with this you know browse to a malicious website well he's actually downloaded the Tor browser well that's not a very good thing and and so all the all the sites that people visit they add a little bit of risk I mean this one for example educational website added uh, 15 point of risk that might not be something bad but the accumulation of all that risk is what brings us to the attention so the guys actually make a search in wiki how how to exfiltrate data without getting caught so but I think the, the the fact that he did all these risky things and he's actually he's been at, at uh, you know uh, there's a combination with spam uh, slash phishing attempted in here brings his risk uh, to a point that can make it uh, fire an offense and to give you an idea of the things 
that uh, the UBA can can look for. So notice the big amount of rules that exist in this. So for example, we can see geo geography, and there are seven rules. So for example, user access from prohibited location. All I need to do, like I did, is I put what are the locations that we do business with, the countries that we do business. Somebody gets access to places that we don't do business with, that's going to give in 15 point of risk and that's going to uh, accumulate on accumulate on on on, uh, on his actual risk restricted location places that we don't do don't want anybody to go if i provide that information to it every time somebody does that you get uh, an increase of 15 point of risk and you can actually play with these parameters and make it fit your need like that very many rules that exist in uh, in QReader for uh, user behavior analytics. Now, that is the standard, the traditional UBA. But UBA has a nice trick. That once you have your, your basic UBA working and detecting things and giving you help, you can move into the next phase. And by the way, all this is included with the product, so you don't have to pay any extra for it. And you can go into machine learning. And what this thing does, it actually has a couple of models and, and you can create your own of course but some of them come like uh, like uh, how many activity distribution what are the type of things that you do okay that's the distribution of your activities if you deviate from it let's say that you do things that you don't normally do well you can actually increase the risk and you can specify these parameters in here to see how much that will affect uh, the amount of risk that, that you do. Same thing for authentication activity. So if your credential has been compromised and all of a sudden you do far more authentication than you would normally do, well, UBA may, may, may be able to catch that by virtue of having a sudden increase on that. Uh, access activity, well, if I access all these sites and all of a sudden I access that very many more, so I have a far more activity on that regard, then that deviation will be caught by the uh, UBA. Same thing with all these different models. I don't have time. There are separate videos that talk about every one of these models. Uh, and you can find them on that PDF file I told you before. If I look into a, a particular users, in this particular case, Ronnie Shard, you can actually see a big increase on the activity that the guy actually did on aggregated activity. These are the kind of, the, the all the things that the guy does. Well, okay, why he doing so much of it? Is he about to leave and he is doing a bunch of things to take some information with him? Has his credentials been compromised? Uh, his machine been taken over? What the heck is actually going on? Well, you can actually go ahead and investigate day by day what are the things that this particular guy uh, did. Notice that he has also a spike on the, on the access activity. That is machine learning uh, working for you. Most organizations are going into the MITRE attack and technique framework. Uh, and how do you play with that into QReader? Well, in one of the, those free apps that you see in the app exchanges, this use case manager that I showed you before, that has the tuning and many other goodies in it. But one of the things that you can go in, in here and say, well, let me actually go and look at the MITRE attacks and techniques. You can actually switch the view here and you can see it on a on a time frame and, and, and how much how was I was in MITRE coverage before and what is it that I'm doing now or I can just see it by uh, right now and and this is the traditional MITRE attacks and techniques and notice that in blue in dark blue you get the things that you are strong that you have some techniques that you are detecting by virtue of some of the rules that, that and, and log sources that you have and some areas for example in impact i don't have any in, any attack on my demo system and any way of uh, detecting uh, uh curera certainly has but i don't have it in my demo that that's what i look so white in here so pale in the area of detecting impact uh, but all areas like uh, credential access i have you know some techniques that makes me look good and it's very rare that you have a customer with all these uh, dark blue, but the idea is to, okay, how do I, let's say that I'm so pale in here, what technologies, what log sources, what flow sources, what, what things can I use, what products in the app exchange can I get 
uh, in order to, to have a better posture uh, regarding uh, this particular technique. And you can, as I saw you before, you can see this over time to see how much your posture is actually improving for detecting bad guys. Now, how hard it is to learn Curator? Well, we try to make it uh, as easy as possible. Again, in this PDF, there are two sections I want to call to your attention. Uh, one, it is this one, which is Securing your home network using the free PSNs. Uh, you, you can run this as a virtual machine or you can buy a, uh, a piece of gear that uh, supports this, like Netgear stuff. And we chose this one because it's open source. It's, it's actually it's very good technology. And they have all the techniques that you can see here. You can have IPS, you can have proxies, you can have, of course, firewalls. Uh, you, you can learn networking. You can learn cybersecurity at your home and with Curator CE, the free Curator CE, uh, and I have a separate section for it. Uh, uh, and, and you know, you can be killing two birds with one stone. Uh, the other section is this, how you download the free Curator CE for testing it and using it again at home for, for lab. And some people, you know, use this to test some rules and then they, I, I, I can show you some, some videos. If you search in here for export, uh, you see how you can do some rules in your free Curator CE and export it into another system later. And this series of think, think Like a Hacker in which we show you attacks and techniques and how you set up your Curator CE uh, to be able to detect all these things is just another way of uh, learning. But this is the stuff that I have done. This is non-official. Uh, there are some other pieces like the IBM Learning Academy. That's a site. If you Google IBM Learning Academy, you will be taken to a professional site in which they have online training uh, on different modules on Curator. And, and the one that I like the most is uh, the IBM's Masterclass. These are something that I've been into two of those, and I have learned so much in every one of those classes that if you get the opportunity, once you have accumulated some basic knowledge in Curator, uh, go into those because those are wonderful. And to, to finish this up, because this video is getting very long, I, what I like about Curator is that it has passed the test of time and for very many years has been the leader in the magic quadrant. And that tells you something about the, the level of investment that, that, the, that the tools uh, get. And as we are moving into more Kubernetes, and, and by the way, I'm doing some, some videos on and Kubernetes and, and Curator and, uh, and on the Cloud Pack for security, which is the evolution of the product. I mean, it's not resting in his, in his laurels and the fact that he's a leader. He's actually moving to offer you the capability of having this same technology, this all this goodness in a format that is more compatible with the way that things uh, are be consumed in the future.